Hi, everybody. Welcome in on Word for Wednesday. Glad that you've joined us today. I was doing a little reading today in Acts chapter 3, and I'll just read from you the, the first couple of verses of this. This is a story that is probably one very familiar to you, but um, it just hit me in a different way today, and I thought I'd share a little bit of what was going on in my noggin as I was uh, reading through this today. It starts this way. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now, a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, as did John. Then Peter said, Look at us. So the man gave his attention, expecting to get something from them. Then Peter said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. And he does. He takes him by his hand. He lifts him up, and he is instantly restored to his health. And it's an amazing story of the power of God flowing through Peter and John to cause this man to be healed. And and that's a story that has always been an amazing story. I mean, how can you not be fascinated by a story like that, excited by it, exuberant? The fact that God's power is so great and that his grace is so abounding that this man would be healed in this way. And what a great thing it is. I, I I want us, though, just for a moment today to, to think about the part of the story that I'd never really given much consideration to before. And that's the part of the story where he said, I don't have silver and gold, but what I do have, I give you. What I do have, I give you. You know, I think there's something very, very spectacular about the simplicity of that idea. Uh, there, there are times and situations and circumstances in life where, where somebody is asking for, uh, from us something that we, we don't have to give. Uh, somebody is needing something that we can't provide. So someone has to have a, a help in an area of expertise that, that we, don't, we don't have that area of expertise or that skill or that ability. Someone's needing something and we can't fill it. And so oftentimes in those circumstances, what we say is, there's nothing I can do. I, I cannot do that. What you are asking, I cannot accomplish. Therefore, I can be of no help to you at all. And I think Peter and John here have given us some verbiage, have given us some words, some idea that, that we need to really stop and think about. This man said, I'm asking for money. And he said, I don't have any money. And at that point, it very easily, any of us could have turned and walked away and said, what you asked for, I can't help you. But he said, but what I do have, I'll give you. What if we looked at circumstances in those lines, in, in those words, in that phrase? What if we looked at circumstances around us and someone is in a point of need and we say, I, I can't give that, but asks the question, what do I have that I can give? I, I can't fix, I can't give you what you're asking for. I can't fix the problem exactly the way that you want it to. But what do I have? What do I possess? How can I somehow be of service to you even in this situation? I think just that extra little step can go so far in helping us to be better engaged in the needs of our society, better engaged with people around us, a better friend to others, a better light to the dark world, and a better representative of Jesus Christ. The next time somebody asks you, can you do this, or, or can I have this, or do you have this for me, uh, can, can you help me with this, and you know the answer is, I can't do that, ask yourself the next question, but what is it I could do? And I think you might just surprise yourself. I hope you'll have a wonderful day. God bless you.